experience is my muse. <laughs> and the way that I see that artists and science intertwine is that both are process-oriented, they both take a lot of creativity, we both have insatiable curiosity. Stepping into maybe places that are uncomfortable um, and also observing things that other people haven't observed before, um, taking notice, and then delighting in the act of discovery. And I'm always fascinated when scientists use metaphors. Memory is the neural echoes of experience, and I really love that. I thought that the chalkboard was a great uh, metaphor for the scientific method, which is where people put out an idea, an educated guess, and then you know people can test it. And a chalkboard is the very sense of impermanence. Sometimes you know it will be completely erased, but you know there's sort of a history of the whole process there. And I was encouraged. Uh, to explore art and science by not only my parents, but also my grandparents. My grandfather is Francis Crick. He's best known for his work on the discovery of the structure of DNA and the hypothesis that DNA is a code, so made up of four letters and that it's universal to all life on Earth. Although we had the basic idea of the structure now, namely that the phosphates were on the outside and we had to put in base pairing and so on, we still had to show that we could build a model with acceptable coordinates. My grandmother uh, is Odile Crick. She was a painter. She was the first person to draw the diagram of the double helix. So that accompanied the 1953 paper um, describing the structure of DNA. And she had infinite amount of patience. And the idea that mistakes are part of the process. Mistakes, I think, are undervalued. Sometimes when scientists make what they think are mistakes, they actually will make a groundbreaking discovery. And then in art, I mean, I think it's most interesting when you're kind of working on a painting and then you kind of get to this point midway through where you might perceive that things are kind of going downhill, but it's that dialogue that kind of overcoming those little challenges. So this is a collaboration um, with Dr. Harkness, who's part of Dr. Barbara Sorg's lab at WSU, where they study perineuronal nets. And so they take images that look like this, using the confocal microscope. And then I transformed it into this installation where you could have this full room where you could walk you know, within this cerebral wilderness. Giving people sort of a different way to see you know, the biology of memory. We were put together by a group called Northwest Noggin, which does arts integrated neuroscience outreach. Hey! Hey, Kendra. Welcome. All right, are you set up? Here we are, yeah. All right, what do we have? So these are rats that were either sleep deprived or not, and we don't know which are which yet. I'm Dr. John Harkness, and I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Washington State University in Vancouver. So let's use that guy. And this is where they're clustered. Yeah, a yeah. A bit more. There's another good pair here.
This is probably one of the gap junctions that these neurons will form. The thought is maybe if the nets aren't there, then you have the oxidative uh, stress? Yeah, we think that they're related. Perinodal nets are really interesting. One of the reasons that we think they're important is they seem to be associated with the formation of a memory or the closure of some of our neural plasticity. Right, that was actually what got me excited was that you said, oh, okay, they're associated with mature neurons and the close of the learning windows. And I thought, right. ah, this is something that people haven't looked at before. So this and that's not a bad image it. either. Oh, no, that's beautiful, <laughs> yeah. I really like the way that the, the blue and the gold are working together. Right. We could take a photograph of this. And then we wait. Mm. <laughs> working with Kendra has been fantastic being able to give reference to what we're looking at in the lab, uh, I think is a, a really important process. Because my work is research-based, I just started researching more about memory, which then led to the chalkboard series. Part of a group show at the Ford Gallery of Pacific Northwest artists who are inspired by science. You know, you have certain connections which are made and they have, they come together and, you know, that is your memory. We had people who were scientists and also who were sort of more, you know, used to the gallery scene and so to see those folks mingle as well it was really cool. They really sort of get this moment of confronting it as a chalkboard and feeling that there's this impermanence to it. And I really like that because, you know, what I'm trying to get across is, is that memory is impermanent. Artists are perception hackers. It is kind of fun to learn about how people perceive and then see if you can translate that you know, in your artwork. I want people to somehow experience the awe and also dive into the unknown.